Hi, I'm Lisa Barrett, Sales and Marketing Manager at Nordex. And today, along with Nikki Antonelli, our senior mechanical engineer, we put together a short training session on gears and gear-related products. Hello, my name is Nick Antonelli. Along with Lisa, I'll be showing you various samples of what Nordex has to offer in our product catalog. Um, I guess we can get started. This is just a sample of some of the various mechanisms and products that we offer. Uh, this is, uh, what I'll do is it's a sample assembly and right now we have a hand crank turning this but you could also attach this to a motor or another shaft or something with a coupling. Uh, starting right here, what we see is a bevel gear assembly. So we have, this gear can be either the driver or the driven gear, this large one here. And the same goes for this small one here. You can drive backwards with this, this sort of setup. It's mainly for a right angle type of drive system. Over here, we have a coupling connecting this gear to this shaft in here. What you see along the area here in here are different bearing holders and um, shaft holders. Uh, moving right along over here, what we have is a pulley arrangement. Uh, we have a small pulley and driving a large pulley here. And the same thing goes here. We can drive in reverse with this pulley setup. Moving right along over here, we have a chain and sprocket setup. We can see this chain is supported on a sprocket underneath here. That sprocket drives this sprocket over here, so you can transfer motion from one shaft to the other. Moving on to this side, this is what we call a Geneva mechanism. This is a, sort of an intermittent, intermittent motion type setup. So as I rotate this shaft here, the indexing key comes around, engages one of the slots here, and rotates this uh, one increment. Uh, in this case, an increment is, I think, uh, 60 degrees. It's a pretty neat uh, device here, and relatively simple. Moving along downstream here, we have a spur gear. This is a standard type of gear that we make here. This large spur gear is driving a smaller gear, and the same thing holds here. You can drive forward and reverse with this type of gear setup. All along this assembly, you see different types of collars, shafts, bearing holders, housings, bearings themselves. Uh, these are all in our catalog. Finally, in this area here, we see a helical gear setup. If you look, this, you can see the teeth are not straight, but they are actually at an angle to the gear. If you look over here on the side, this large gear is driving a smaller gear, which in turn drives a counter. So, and In this case, you can also go forward and reverse. Thing that okay, here we go. Uh, first thing we're going to look at is a spur gear. This is one of our standard setups. Uh, in this case, the teeth are straight. Um, what we have here, this is a uh, pin mounted design. We have a set screw here in case you want to fasten the uh, sprocket or gear onto the shaft. If the shaft went through here like this, you simply tighten on this, the set screw here. There's another option too, we have a little pin that we can drill through here. So we start the hole for you. At assembly you would drill through this hole, through the shaft, and put a roll pin or a dowel pin to hold everything together and it would be solid. Here's an example of what that would look like. This gear is actually pinned onto the shaft. Okay. Now, when we describe gears, we usually say the pitch. The pitch is describing the size of the tooth. Um, Nordex is a fine pitch gear company, so usually our pitches range from 20 to about 120. Uh, once you know the pitch, we'll also need to know how many teeth there are on the gear. Uh, in this case, um, the outer diameter is here. Of course, that's on the outer diameter, the outside of the gear. We describe the face width as this surface here 
to this surface here. So that, that's the, the actual thickness of the gear. This protrusion here is called the hub. In this case, the hub sticks out. We, we, it's in the catalog. We tell you how much it sticks out. So if you want to model this into your assembly, you'll know exactly if this will fit or not. Okay. Moving right along. Here's another uh, gear that we have. This is a set screw setup. So in this case, the set screw actually goes right through the, the gear teeth, which is fine since the teeth themselves out here are doing all the work. We machine this area down. That makes it a hub. Next, this is another spur gear, but this is called a uh, clamping setup or a split hub setup. So what we do is our shaft will go through the gear here. On top of that, we will put this clamp. This clamp would actually go over the gear. We would tighten the screw and this would lock the gear onto the shaft. And it's easy to adjust and remove if that were the case. Okay, any questions, Lisa? Um, not yet. Not okay. yet. Okay, here's another example of a spur gear. We have metric and inch sizes, so this is a metric gear. Uh, it's a very, very fine pitch. Uh, in this case, this was set up as an idler. Um, this would simply go on a shaft and would rotate. So, so sometimes gears don't have to be fixed to the shaft. They can actually idle or rotate freely on that shaft. Okay, moving right along, the next setup here we have is an anti-backlash gear assembly. So what we see, if we look very closely, we see a fine line separating this gear in half. I don't know if you can see that fine line there. I hope you can on that camera. I'm going to try and rotate one gear relative to the other. So there are two gears basically on the same shaft. One is fixed, the other one floats. The floating gear is connected with these springs. So these springs keep a slight force of one gear relative to the other. So as it's rotating, when the rotation stops, there's no backlash in the system. So this gives, gives a very repeatable type setup. This is good for robotics and medical industry where you need exact positioning time after time. This is a standard gear in our catalog. You can see the part number here. Um, this one is held together with a nut and a screw. So these are all set here at Nordex. So the only thing you would have to do in the field is put this on your shaft, like so. Mount your clamping collar like this, and you're good to go. We also make pin hub designs with, of the same uh, type of gear. Okay. So we have standard sizes in yes. the catalog in inch and metric, and then we do custom uh, work as well. Yes. Okay, moving right along. These are our internal, internal gears. Um, you see different pitches here. Basically, an in, internal gear, you have the teeth on the inside of the gear instead of on the outside. Now, in this case, what you would have is another gear running on the inside of this one, like so. Uh, in practicality, I guess this shaft would be fixed, the outer one would be rotating with it. So there's a lot of different uh, applications where this would be useful in the military, camera optics, uh, rotating one member relative to another. We also make coarser uh, internal gears. We also make splines uh, with the same type of setup. So you have many, many options with this type of setup. We also can make helical versions of this where the teeth are actually angled. So it's a little, a little tricky to make, but uh, we can do that here. Okay, moving downstream some more. Well, we have our compound or cluster gear set up. In this case, we have two gears on the same shift. This large gear can be driving one assembly, and this small gear can be driving another mechanism. So that there's a lot of possibilities with this type of setup. Um, we can put um, easily three, four, five different gears in the same center. 
So this is just an example of what we can do here. In this case, these are pinned together, so this is basically at functioning as one part. This is a, a pin style setup with a set screw, and we also make the split hub version. Here's just another example of the same thing. On this hub out here, we can mount another gear. So we have different sizes. We can even put a, a, a sprocket and a gear on the same shaft if we have to, or a pulley and a sprocket and a gear. We've done many types of different combinations of that. So you can buy the each gear separate, or we can uh, assemble for you here? Correct. We also have hubless designs. Uh, basically, it's a bare gear and would fit onto a standard hub. So we, you can mix and match different sizes. You can do it in the field if you had to, or we can do it for you here at Nordex and get everything set up for you perfectly. Just another example of a helical gear. If you notice the teeth are at, at an angle relative to the bore, so this is a straight tooth gear here, and this is a helical gear. So you can see the, the difference in teeth. And you can tell what kind of gear, if it's a left hand or right hand, um, basically if you put the gear down flat, on a flat surface, if you look which way the teeth are pointing, that'll tell you if, if you have a right hand or a left hand gear. So we have different types of these available too, metric and inch. And we can also make custom sizes too. Down here is another example of a gear. In this case, this is a split hub. The same thing uh, as we were speaking about before. You would put your shaft through here, put your clamping device on the outside, clamp it together, and now this is solid. This is perfect for a motor that has no D feature or no feature where you can actually screw onto it, or if you don't want to ruin the motor shaft when you clamp onto it. This grabs very, very, very tightly onto this shaft. <clears throat> Moving downstream further, we have another heel hook gear. Here's another example of a anti-backlash gear setup. This is a much coarser gear. We can make these in different types of size, different sizes, different versions. But the basic idea is the same. You have one sh one gear that is fixed, and the other one that we call a floater. And if you look very closely here, these are our pinions. Basically, we have a shaft, and on the end of that shaft, we cut our gear teeth. In this case, we have ten teeth on this. Uh, I don't know if you can see from the movie or the camera, but this is basically an inch in the, one eighth of an inch in diameter with ten teeth on it. So these are actually gear teeth on here. So we make these standard. These are standard in our catalog. We make different versions of this. And here's another one. In this case the gear teeth are actually bigger than the shaft itself. So those are one piece construction. Correct. These are one piece construction. This this makes it very strong. Um, you, can, yeah, you can put a lot of torque on this. The shaft would probably break before the gear teeth do. So. These are very neat. And what are those used for? Um, well, they're called pinions, so you can drive basically anything. If I have this in a housing, I can drive a, a, a gear assembly. Um, it could be a medical device. I could have a motor on the end of here with a coupling. It could be a military application. I could drive a very, very, very large gear with this. I could drive an internal gear with this actually too, if I had to. I would put this on the inside of the gear and would rotate it that way. In this case, I'd have about a 20 to 1 reduction with this type of setup. So there are many possibilities with this type of gear. And we can make these in different types of materials, of course, hardened steel, soft steel. Uh, aluminum, if you worry about weight, titanium uh, is something we've been talking about lately also. Okay, moving downstream. This is our bevel gear setup. I don't know if you can see this. Basically what we have are two gears where the teeth are angled. They're shaped like cones, uh, if you want to be, I guess, uh, technical about it. But what happens here is one gear is fixed, 
and the other one is placed at right angles to it. And these teeth lock in pretty good. These, the teeth are on angles, so what we call the cone angles must match. So the, these gears are sold as an assembly. You can't just put one bevel gear on another one. The angles have to match. And these are all in our catalog sold as match sets. You, you can get replacements for the individual gears, but we sell these basically as match sets. Um, what you have here, in this case, you can have like a 10 to 1 reduction. Um, that's probably as high as we would want to go. But if you have a right angle drive, a lot of people like this sort of setup. Uh, these come in an anti-backlash version also, which I'm holding a standard one. This is a pin hub with a set screw. But we also make uh, the split hub version and, as I said, the uh, anti-backlash version. What this is, this is a gear hub. This is what we actually use to cut a standard gear. And if you look at it, this is actually pretty much a screw with slots cut into it. And the way we make gears, basically how we make gears is this hub would rotate. As it rotates, these slots here cut into the gear teeth. So this is basically a screw. So this is rotating in this direction. And as it rotates, these screw threads basically lead out and the, they actually cut into the gear. So as we rotate the gear, the hob rotates also with it. And we make a few ro revolutions. We actually cut the teeth using this type of device. So this, this has been around for many, many, many decades. So um, This actual hob itself is, I'm going to say, close to 75 years old. And it still works today. So this idea is um, tried and true. Okay, um, really quick, we have other methods of fastening our gears to the shaft. Again, we have our set screw. There's other ways to do it. You can put a D in your shaft and a D in your pulley, mount them together, and this makes a very, very good uh, fit when you have a, a tight tor uh, high torque or you need a tight accuracy. Another idea is putting a keyway in. You would put a keyway in your pulley and also the same reverse cut into your shaft. Put a key in this little slot here and everything gets locked together. You can put set screws right through your pulley teeth. Um, in this case here, everything is so small, we actually put a cut into our gear. See the slot here? put another slot here, and we use the gear itself to clamp down on the shaft. So if our shaft goes through here, we tighten the screw and everything gets locked down. It's all one piece. And this is a special? This is special, yes, yeah. yes. Yes, we, we can make pretty much anything here with, with these type of uh, arrangements. Um, if you really want uh, to get um, interesting, Here's a pulley, and the actual bearing is integral to the pulley. The, the outer race of this pulley is a bearing, and the inner race, the shaft right here, is the inner race of the bearing. So you have a one-piece setup, needs no maintenance, and this is relatively inexpensive if you uh, compare it to putting a pulley with two bearings, a special shaft together. This is all one piece. We actually made a bearing. This, this itself has two bearings built into this that we assembled here. Uh, one couple things to note about gears and pulleys. If you have two pulleys together, basically you drive them with a belt um, and you see the directions of rotation on the pulleys are the same. Right? If one goes forward, one, go one goes with it. They both rotate either counterclockwise or clockwise in this case. With gears, on the other hand, when you mate your gears together, just as an example, they eat, one goes clockwise and the other goes counterclockwise. So it's just something to note. If you want a reverse rotation, I could put an idler in between these two guys, and it would pretty much, I don't know if that shows up in the camera or not, but yeah, I can pretty much reverse rotation. 
like that. It's a very crude way of showing it, but just to, to give you an idea of what we do. Okay, great. Okay. Moving along, I guess we can show some bearings here. These are our roller bearings. Um, these come in various sizes. We have inch and metric versions. These are all in our catalog. These are held to very tight tolerances. We have what we call the ABEC Series 3 and 7. Um, as you go higher in number, the accuracy gets much, much greater. And the cost also rises accordingly. Here, this is a standard double shielded bearing. If you see in here, I'll, I'll compare it to an open bearing. This is an unshielded bearing here. You can actually see the balls. There's no protection on them. This other smaller bearing next to it has two shields on it and the shields actually com uh, protect the balls that are on the inside. These are permanently lubricated, so you never have to do any maintenance on these. And these are sold as standard, as are these. So both versions are standard. Another bearing that we have is what we call a flange bearing. If you look here, on the outer diameter, we have a flange. So this will help you mount this into your surface. Um, we have an actual locating point so that once you press this in into your hole it hits this outer ring here and it, which acts as a stop and now this bearing is locked in one of the uh, directions so it can't come out unless you pull it out and we make these in shielded and unshielded varieties also uh, just showing you a couple different sizes we have another smaller roller bearing this is open and try and rotate it but um, this is unshielded this also has a flange on it I don't know if it's possible to see it on here here we have a caged roller bearing now if you look inside here those aren't balls those are actual rollers these are pins now per width of bearing this can handle higher loads and it can usually go to higher uh, speeds also. Now is this one linear or rotary? This one's rotary. We also have different types of bearings which are called linear. What you see here, if you look inside there's ball bearings in rows. So this can actually be placed onto a shaft and can slide back and forth on that shaft. And I believe this one uh, some of these are also made they can rotate as they oscillate back and forth. So you have a lot of freedom of motion with these type of uh, setups. There's mounting holes here that come standard on all of these. And we make these in various sizes. This one's steel. You can feel the uh, has a lot of mass to it. This is a very strong device here. Mm -hmm. Okay, we do have uh, a lot of other versions of linear bearings. Correct. That, that we're not showing Yeah, here And today. we also have um, some people call them bushings. It's basically a plain uh, cylinder made out of a very tough plastic which can ride on this shaft. The shaft would have to be um, ground and polished, of course, but uh, it makes an inex inexpensive version of uh, one of these bearings. Okay, I guess the next thing we're going to look at are couplings. We have several different types here. The simplest one that I have right here, it's a simple tube type coupling. If you look at it, it's just a simple tube, basically. I put a shaft on this side, another shaft on this side, tighten the set screws, and you're good to go. These are inexpensive. These are for, um, I've seen applications where they put encoders or very low force type uh, applications. It's a relatively simple device. Now, if if everything doesn't line up properly, you, you might want a, a coupling that looks like this. Um, same, same idea here. One shaft will go on this side, another shaft will go on this side, and we would tighten the set screws. And this would, I don't know if you can see the oscillations here, I can actually compensate for misalignment between the two shafts when I do this. Now we also make another version we, where we actually clamp onto the shaft. We split it here and we put a screw in this area and we clamp each side so you have a very very strong fit but it handles a lot of misalignment next moving right along 
we have another coupling. This is basically a rubber connector between two metal shafts. So if I put a shaft on this side, another one on this side, this has a clamping collar on both sides. We make set screw versions too, I believe. They would be clamped, and this rubber would actually handle misalignments between the two shafts, uh, both the input and output. It's a pretty neat device. This is pretty popular. Finally, we have a bellows type coupling. If you look here, this is actually pretty much, it, it resembles a bellows. Uh, I don't know if you can see me articulating this back and forth, but the same idea here. One shaft goes on this side, another shaft connects on this side. In this case, we use set screws to connect everything together. This bellows will handle misalignment and um, the centers being out. I guess this goes up to 10,000. I, I think that's what we said in the catalog, but um, this handles a lot of misalignment both at angularity and parallel. It's a pretty neat device. This is a set screw type setup. And I guess lastly, at least on this section, is the racks. A rack basically is a gear that is just laid out flat. We unroll it flat. There's a lot of applications for these type of things. Um, I guess you heard of a rack and pinion on a car. Uh, right here, I guess, um, just as an example, I would rotate this gear, which would be a drive gear, and it, it would move the rack in and out. Like that. Just to give you an idea of how it would work. So if you want to convert rotating motion to linear motion, this is the type of setup that you would use. And we make metric and inch versions. Some people make the um, presses if you want to use a, these in an arbor press. If you want to put a lot of force on something, you can put a lot of torque on this gear, and would, this would act as a ram, and would put a lot of force on the, the object that you're squeezing or pressing. We make these in square and round varieties, if you look at it. Okay, okay. great. This is very useful information. And all these products and a whole lot more can be found at, on our website at www.nordax.com. Also available in a paper uh, design guide that you can also order online. And I think that ends this lesson. Thank you very much. <laughs> Hello, my name is Nick Antonelli. Along with Lisa, I'll be showing you the various. Stop. Hello, my name is Nick Antonelli. Along with Lisa, I'll be showing you various products of what Nordics.